have you been to the Mayfair since you shot here with David Hess? Not once. Just really? Me. No, I've been here lots <laughs> since you shot here. I was thinking a lot has changed, right? That movie yeah. came out in 2009. Mm -hmm. And when we shot uh, Smash Cut here with David, mm -hmm. I had, I now, the programmer at the Mayfair Theatre, one of the partners, mm -hmm. and, but, but then I had no interest even in being a part of the cinema scene. And now it's my life. <laughs> yeah, it's true. It's changed a lot. Yeah, we filmed in 2008. I think of David every day I'm here because mm -hmm. the projection booth door is broken. David <laughs> broke it. <laughs> we were doing a yep. scene in the smash cut. Sasha Gray's up here. Yeah. And, and she introduces um, with, with, Je with Jesse Buck. Right. And they introduce David to the, to the, to the stage. Yeah. And David comes out of the door, the door at the back of the cinema where the projection booth is. And he stepped on a part of the door that he shouldn't have stepped on. <laughs> and the projection still complains about it. But I say to him, can you just leave it? It's yeah. a nice memory, you know? Yeah, it's kind of nice. It's like when my dad came over and took a shit in the toilet. And I didn't want him to flush it because <laughs> I want to remember my dad. <laughs> by that last shit. That's nice. You know, uh, uh, let, let me go back. So we made a film called Smash Cut, and it was David Hess's last starring role. Yeah. And we filmed it in 2009, and two years later, he passed away. 2008, we filmed it. We filmed it in 2008, released in 2009. Yeah. Yeah, and by two years after it was released, he passed away, mm -hmm. um, which broke my heart. Yeah. And I, I know All of ours. Yes, Yeah, of he touched everybody. Of course. Yeah. I had this idea to make this movie for years and years and years. And I never pictured I'd have enough money to actually hire anyone from Hollywood to be in the film. Mm -hmm. I thought I was going to shoot it on 16 millimeter with no money and ask Jenny Lee to do me a favor. And <laughs> I, I would have. I could <laughs> pay you to be in it. And yeah. so a uh, peer David got on board as a producer. He produced Scanners mm -hmm. for David for David Cronenberg and um, two two David Cronenberg films. Mm -hmm. And uh, and an I'm, upstart Travis Stevens, who is now doing his right. own that's right his own stuff with Snowfort Pictures. That's right. Travis and Pierre were on, allowed on set one day. Yep. Because Pierre made me very nervous, and I asked Rob, "Can you keep him away from set?" Yeah. And uh, he came to the agreement with Pierre. He can only be on set for one day. It came to the one day that we were filming the theater scene at Algonquin. That's right. David got along with them, I remember. Anyway, I, Pierre asked me, who do you want the cast in Smash Cut? Who's your leading man? Yeah. You, you can have anyone you want. I'm like, really? I always thought it would be cool to have a filmmaker play Abel Whitman. Mm. So we originally re reached out to David Cronenberg because of Pierre's affiliation. Mm -hmm. David loved the script, but... The shooting schedule didn't work out. He was doing The Fly on stage right. in London. Yeah. And he's like, Lee, who do you want? Who, Cronenberg, forget about, forget about a director. Get an actor. Get, get, who can, who's right to play this role? And I thought of David Hess uh, because I couldn't think of anything more intense than, mm. than the, the, the three roles he played in Last House on the Left, House at the Edge of the Park, and uh, Hitchhike. Mm -hmm. But it was his interview he did on the, uh, the DVD release of House of the Age of the Park. There's a 40-minute interview with David Hess. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I remember you showed me that before I'd met him. Yeah. yeah. Wasn't it nice? Was we did that? lots of things before we met him. We yeah. watched, we watched, I remember you, we Gwen watched and I Hitchhike. watched Hitchhike. Yeah, well, we watched that at the old Zed Filmworks office. Yes. And I think Gwen and I were terrified to meet David because we were like, he's crazy. <laughs> yes. How much of that acting Why persona Why wouldn't you is? be afraid to meet this guy? <laughs> yeah. He d you would suspect that he'd be the most intimidating fella. Oh, yeah. But he's not. He's a goofball. He's a puppy I think yeah. uh, he's a goofball. That's <laughs> yeah. a good way. He is a goofball. I think maybe there was a time where he was hard to get along with and hard, you know, the way Mark Scheffler sometimes talk, tells old stories about David Hess, which I yeah. want to talk about. Yeah. Mark would often tell me that, yeah, Mar David was hard to work with. You know, he, mm -hmm. by the time we worked with him, you know, he was, um, you know, older, and when you get older, you get wiser. I'm not there yet, but... Yeah, and more and, patient, yeah. and you kind of let things happen. You're a little more playful. He's also a father yep. by this point. That's how we made it, and, I, and yep. that was his life. Yep. Talked about his kids, like... Uh, Nonstop. Yeah. Yeah. So, but to go back to the interview on the House of the Age of the Park, he talks about what it was like to work with the women mm -hmm. in those films. Mm -hmm. They're very violent films, mm -hmm. and David uh, was very violent with the women in the movies, but he talks about that, those scenes and how well he got along with the women he worked with. Yeah. And this camaraderie they had. And, and you know, when you watch those scenes, it's hard to even look at. But now I look at them and, and, and you know, I think about, wow, yeah, it's, it's amazing those two actors could get along that way to pull, able to pull off scenes like that. Yeah. And here I am sitting with Jenny Lee Murray, <laughs> who, you know, when you watch Smash Cut, you're not 
a lie for most of the movie. <laughs> <laughs> I die pretty soon. You were on set almost every day. Yeah. You were. I came in every day, whether I was on. You were actually on camera or not. Yeah, attached to David's hip. Mm -hmm. And I think that went towards the acting process. And I think that really helped David. Mm -hmm. I don't know if you- if It helped you, me too. That was my first film that's ever. Right. So it was a lot of trying to glean stuff from other people on set. David was really generous with his time and wisdom and stuff, right? right. So I'd go on set, I'd ask him questions. I still remember the very first scene that we filmed was in the car. And I remember sitting down and I was trying to remember my lines. I was so nervous. And I'm trying to remember how to blow bubbles and do all these things <laughs> and pretend I'm really cool and not nervous. And, and he was like, it's cool. We're just making a movie. If you mess it up, we're going to take a few more takes. I'm like, Meh, OK. <laughs> yeah. Uh, yeah, it, it, it's, it reminds me of the method. You know, I think David, David considered himself a method actor. Mm -hmm. And the way he got along with you the whole time making that movie was part of that method. Mm -hmm. When he died at the end of the movie, when his character dies, mm -hmm. you weren't on the call, call sheets, you weren't supposed to be there, mm -hmm. but you were there, mm -hmm. so we put you in hair and makeup, lied you down beside David Hess, mm -hmm. and when he dies, he's, he's got tears in his eyes, he's losing, you know, it's a really great performance, yeah. uh, not because you weren't there, because you were there, yeah. and uh, for the whole nice. time, you know, and it's, do you remember his post-it notes? Yep. <laughs> so David would have post-it notes. He'd have his lines written on post-it notes, almost like you'd hear stories about Brando having a near piece in his ear. Yep. Another method actor. David would put post-it notes. The scene he does with Jesse Buck mm -hmm. in the office, when he's opposite Jesse Buck, he had the post-it notes on the lamps, on, on the computer. He had it everywhere. Yeah. But it wasn't because he didn't know the lines. He just wanted to get the set and find what he was going to say. And he always hit his marks. Mm -hmm. And it's a really good sequence of him and Jesse Buck. Mm -hmm. It's really fun and playful. Do I know you? I'm a fan of your work. Really? No. Nobody's a fan of your work. I don't think you can tell watching the scene that he's reading from post-it notes. No. But he tried to explain to me that yeah, Lee, this is, this is how a lot of actors work. Mm -hmm. It's not that we don't know the lines, we wanna talk. When you talk, like I'm talking to you right now, there's no script, we're just kind of finding what we need to say. Yeah. And David's performance in Smash Cut, I don't know if he did that in his other films, I imagine he did, that's the way he worked. He's right, he's right, I have a film to finish. I think a lot of the crew were, came out of the Pierre David um, you know, production that house, yeah. and they weren't used to working, I think they were used to working with actors who just knew the lines, they'd move on. Yep. And I think it might have frustrated some people working on set, and I, I kind of liked that. I kind of asked for people's patience, mm -hmm. but I kind of liked watching that these people were working with someone different. Absolutely. Yeah, it would kind of blow the lid off of how they understand acting and film and takes and stuff. It's a fucking horror film! Yeah. Yeah, I actually think it helped everybody on set. Yeah. In a lot of ways, yeah. I remember Tim sitting on the floor sometimes. Just like, <laughs> David would, you know, he's like, watch dude. It. Come on, let's just move on. And I, and I said, Tim, it's not that kind of movie. Yeah. And this is not your uh, average actor. Yeah. And Sasha Gray was like that too. Yeah. Sasha Gray had a really interesting, uh, between takes, she was, she was interesting. Mm -hmm. Michael Berryman told me that he always wanted to do a scene, a movie with David Hess, that they had been in movies together. Mm -hmm. Uh, but they never got a chance to improvise. Mm -hmm. And he's like, Lee, we got two scenes together. Do you mind, do you mind if we make this last scene all improvisational? Yeah. And David was really for that too. Yeah. Ian hates it. <laughs> the writer hates it because of it's Of course, all, it's but, like off model, but yeah. We had a, a red camera mm -hmm. and we had two red cameras that day. Mm -hmm. One on David, one on Michael, and we just ran the cameras and they went nuts. It was hilarious. And they loved it. Yeah. Hable. Did it? You are like whatever, Philip. You know, it's like I felt like we didn't even have to send him a paycheck <laughs> at them making that movie because they had such a good time making yep. that. I don't know. It just feels. I feel like we have so much to talk about with David. <laughs> I know. So how did you? How did you meet him for the first time? I met him for the first time through you. You had picked him up, and was it here? Was it at a bar? I think did we go to Chez Le Sien that Probably, night? Probably. Or yeah. Oz? Something he like loved that. Oz. Yeah, it was yeah. something like that. I can't remember the place, but I remember you'd picked him up and I met him. It might have been Oz actually now that I'm thinking of it when she was still on Elgin Street. I think the only time I saw da David without you, mm -hmm. because you were always with him, and I mm -hmm. love that. Mm -hmm. And and um, I think some people just thought it was weird too. Mm -hmm. I think like people thought the, the production manager thought, oh, we have to pay Jenny Lee now because she's here all the time. It's like, no, 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 no. No, I she's... just wanted to be there. Yeah, it's like, you know that, that scene in the, on, the on the waterfront, Brando and um, 
oh, who's the uh, Rod Steiger? Mm -hmm. They had that scene in the back of the cab. Mm -hmm. It's the most famous scene for any actor who wanted to be an actor, most inspirational scene. And so they did a two shot, and they're they're both in the shot. Mm -hmm. And they did they did when they did Marlon Brando's close up, Rod Steiger stayed there. Yeah. And it gave Marlon something to play off. Mm -hmm. When they do Rod Steiger's close up, Mar Marlon Brando went to take a shit or whatever he did. <laughs> he wasn't yeah. there. Rod yeah. Steiger hated him for that. Yeah. But to think about how you were there for David throughout, mm -hmm. and I guess vice versa. I mean, David yeah. he was, was showing there anyways. the ropes. Yeah. Oh, absolutely. The only time I saw him without you around, I mean, we went to the movies a lot. Mm -hmm. Every movie I saw with David Hesse, he'd always compare it to Last House on the Left. <laughs> <laughs> Every movie. I remember going to a festival with him and seeing uh, Bronson. Yeah. With Tom Hardy. Yeah. And it was amazing. It was sold it was out. So and it was incredible. And I couldn't gush out. I gushed to David about it. He's like, well, you know, when we made Last Hunters and Left, it was a little bit more intense. And <laughs> <laughs> it will never match that movie. Nothing will ever match that movie. And the other thing, David would always come to my, uh, my daughter's soccer games. He'd come watch her soccer because a lot of people don't know that David Hess was uh, the captain of the U.S. rugby team, right? Yeah, that's that right too. Yeah. I mean, before, without David, I mean, David was impressive before he started acting mm -hmm. because he wrote five songs with Elvis Presley, five songs that Elvis Presley recorded, yep. including I'm All Shook Up. Yep. When I'm at Shayla Sien, I hear I'm All Shook Up. I get a little shook up hearing it. <laughs> oh, I like yeah. telling my friends, oh, a buddy of mine wrote this song. Yeah, I say that. They're like, what? And I'm like, <laughs> look it up. <laughs> Captain of the US rugby team. Wow. And after Last House on the Left, he moved to Germany mm -hmm. and started, uh, he worked, he, he shared an office with Rainer Vender Fassbender. Mm -hmm. I don't think I'm pronouncing his German name properly, <laughs> but Fassbender. I worked yeah. with him and dubbed his movies in English, worked on a lot of porno. I think a lot of porno that we saw in the 70s. He had dubbed. Yeah. Yeah. I think David Hess was getting us off for decades. <laughs> Without us even realizing. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. But yeah, he would come, you know, my daughter said to me recently, my daughter's 14 now, and she said to me recently, yeah, I remember David coming to my soccer game. I thought that was really cool, that one afro that's <laughs> set in the bleachers. <laughs> that one menacing afro yeah. in the bleachers. Yeah. Do you know how I met David for the first time? No, I was going to ask. When we cast David Hess, when I said to Pierre David, it's like, David Hess, David Hess is the guy. I remember thinking, he was at a convention, a horror film convention, and my friend and I wanted to go meet him. Yeah. And her favorite line, her favorite line, Robin, this girl, Robin Whaley, her favorite line, who came to visit David on set, I wanted her to meet him. Yeah. Her favorite line in the Last House on the Left is, piss your pants. Oh yeah, you know? that's classic. <laughs> I was looking at photos he had signed for me when we were at uh, the Horror Con in New York. Yes. And yeah, he wrote piss your pants on everything. <laughs> <laughs> okay, let's. Do you remember? Anyways, me, do you remember? Do you remember date when David Hess introduced us to Dario Argento? Yep. <laughs> <laughs> Awkward. You and I were in the New Yorker. We were sitting in the yep. lobby with David Hess. Yep. I remember David was just sprawled out on a couch, and we were sitting opposite him talking. And, <laughs> yeah. uh, and I, I got so distracted when when Dario Argento came through the revolving door of the New Yorker. I'm like, Yeah. Oh David, my God, there he Dario, is. Dario Argento. And he, and he sat up, Lee. Would you like to meet Dario? I've, I've known him very well. I've known him for years. Would you like to meet him? And I'm like, fuck yeah, I want to meet Dario Argento. And then David got up out of his chair. Dario! And he, was, he was turning it on. Dario! He, I remember him pinching his cheeks and he started speaking Italian to Dario Argento. Yeah. David could speak a little bit of Italian. Yeah. He was pinching his cheeks and hugging him, touching him, and talking to him with his hands. And they seemed so close. And Jenny Lee Murray, Dario Argento, Lita Marb, Dario Argento. Yeah. And it was, and Dario was smiling as he was with his wife. And then we saw them to their elevator. The yeah. elevator doors closed, and we went on with our weekend. Yeah. One thing, Dar Dario had his publicist with him, so the whole weekend went by. We met Fred Lincoln. Yep. Uh, which was quite nice. Mm -hmm. and yeah, he was sweet. So anyway, we, we, you and I, David left, and you and I were found ourselves in the bar at the New Yorker by ourselves. Yep. Dario had left. David Hess had left. And uh, the publicist called us over and he wanted to tell us a story that as soon as the elevator doors closed, Dario said to him, who the hell was that man with the afro? <laughs> <laughs> oh, maybe Dario's a real actor. He really played it well. We're like, wow, imagine, they're best friends. Can you imagine not knowing David Hess and David Hess came up to you and touched your face? and Hugged you and kissed you and screamed uh, Italian profanities at you. David never worked with Dario. Dario, you know, obviously David worked with a lot of great Italian filmmakers. Mm -hmm. Ruggiero Diodato, mm -hmm. uh, the likes of Ruggiero Diodato. Ruggiero's friendship with David is, is legendary, mm -hmm. um, but never Dario. Yeah. But maybe <laughs> met him some festival. A couple some, of times yeah. somewhere, but yeah. Uh, David Hess introduced me to Tom Savini that yep. weekend. 
Again, I was talking to David, and I stopped listening to everything he said because I said, D -d -d Tom Savini. <laughs> and he said, Lee, do you want to meet Tom Savini? And he actually yes, knew did. Tom. Yeah. And so uh, D David took me over to meet Tom. And Tom, he introduced Tom to me. And Tom, without, was just too, he just wanted to know what David thought about the remake of Last House on the Left. Mm -hmm. He said, David, have you seen the Last House on the Left remake yet? And David, at that point, no, I haven't seen it. And I said, Tom, I've seen it. And, and, he, and what did you think? And I said, at the, the last shot in the remake of The Last House on the Left, during the end credit sequence, if you look at it, the house is on the right side of the street. And Tom Savini thought that was so funny. <laughs> and they called Tom Savini's name on the speaker. Tom Savini ran up on stage, yep. hundreds of people, in front of hundreds of people. He said, everyone, David Hess, big hand for David Hess. He's standing right there. Yep. And his buddy just told me that the house is on the right in the remake of Last House and Left. And everyone that. laughed. And I was swooning because <laughs> Tom Savini, he's using my words. <laughs> and I met Tom this summer again. And I, oh. brought, I was at the SteelCon convention in Monroeville. And I said, Tom, you know, I was introduced to you by David Hess. And mm -hmm. uh, he had a lot of light, nice, lovely things to say about David. That's I also nice. met that weekend Ken Forey, the star of Dawn of the Dead. Cool. And when he knew I knew David, he, when, we brought up, when I brought up David's name to him, mm -hmm. he, he gushed Aww. and sat back in his seat and held his chest. And so he signed my Dawn of the Dead poster for David. Oh, that's sweet. Yeah, I keep meeting people. Yeah. knew David and, and, and their endless love. Yeah. Mark Scheffler, number one. Number one. Yeah, <laughs> absolutely number one. Yeah. yeah, and his kids too. What would you say the first movie that you ever saw of David Hess's was? Swamp Thing. The Swamp Thing? Because I was, I was young, I'm too young to watch Last House and Left. Yeah. I was at home with my son when, you know, surely in 2009, Max was, you know, four. I think when he was five, a year later, Last House and the Left was on TV during the day. And, and he's like, Daddy, look, it's, it's Uncle David. And I said, yeah, click. <laughs> <laughs> he can't watch David. So I showed him Swamp Thing, and he loves Swamp Thing. But I remember yeah. being young, like in that movie, hmm. I remember thinking, I think it's still my favorite Marvel movie. Yeah. Of all the Marvel superhero movies, nothing beats Swamp Thing. Yeah. And David's so funny. Obviously, I didn't know who David was for seeing for the first time. I think it's something when you watch Last House on Left, and then you see Swamp Thing, how... You know, see how amazing. dynamic he is. Yes, yeah. yes. So when we cast David Hess, yes. and I said to Pierre David, let's go for David Hess, because my friend Robin Whaley had a t-shirt she had made for this convention that said, I'll piss my pants for David Hess. Right. I wore that on set often. Right. She made it for me as well. So I said to Pierre David, let's cast David Hess. He offered the role to David J. Hess, a dentist <laughs> in Texas, who loved the script, <laughs> but had to tell us he's never been in a movie before. And I'm like, Pierre David, uh, not David Hess. Yes, the guy from Last House on the Left. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, Rob Menzies, the producer of Smash Cut, had a, uh, one of the nicest things he had ever done. He says, Lee, why don't you go fly out to LA and meet David before he comes to Auto? Make sure, you know, things click. Mm -hmm. uh, and I'm like, oh, I'd love to. I never met David. Talked to him once on the phone. Once on the phone. Flew to LA to meet David. And outside of LAX, I rented a car. I, he flew in after me. So I rented the car, f drove back. He was coming in from San Francisco. Mm -hmm. He called me. I was in the car outside of LAX. He's like, Lee, Lee, I just want to tell you, I'm wearing a, a, a tan shirt and jeans. It's like, David, I, I know what you look like. I'm just going to look for the biggest afro coming out of the airplane. <laughs> like, where's <Airport."> Waldo? <laughs> <laughs> and David, I'd never met him before. He came out. He threw his bags in the back seat of the car, yeah. jumped in the front seat, and he ejected the CD that was playing in my car. And he didn't say hello. He acted like the first, the first moment I met him, he acted like I knew him forever. I feel like you guys kind of did know each other forever. <laughs> it was Just nice. Kind of, yeah. I mean, I did yoga with David as an You I sure did. <laughs> it's changed your life. David ejected the CD and he put in his new CD. Right. Um, caught, up, caught in a moment. Mm -hmm. And uh, great CD. But when the first time I heard it, because he knew I, I was in Mexico making a film with Martin Cove. Martin Cove from Last House on the Left, who plays a deputy to the sheriff. Mm -hmm. Martin Cove uh, and I spent weeks together in Mexico. David knew this. David knew I was editing a movie that we shot in Mexico and wanted us to mu use his music in that movie. So he put the CD in and he played Day of the Dead. He's like, I want you to use this in your movie. And I, the song came on. I loved the song, but when I first heard it, I thought it was a joke. I thought he was joking because it's like, like the last house on the left soundtrack. Yeah. It's, it's, a cir it's like circus music in a way, you know? <laughs> yeah, it doesn't quite fit. No, not at yeah. all. I love that CD. I listen to it all the time. Yeah. But when I first heard David, that I was just laughing at it. I laughed at his art, which I'm sure I didn't <laughs> I'm like, David, uh, 
we in the end we couldn't use it. Uh, I think I think we had a very small post production budget, and we mm -hmm. couldn't. We didn't feel the need to license any music. David and I took the side roads back. We didn't take a highway from the LAX to L the downtown Los Angeles. We took all the side roads back. I remember driving through parts of LA I'd never been to before. I remember like seeing things and I remember, you know, oh, that, that's where they shot Chinatown. Wow. Th those kinds of things. Yeah. And David and I just talked and talked endlessly. Mm -hmm. um, and, and then I said, do you want to meet Sasha Gray? You're here to audition. Tell me you're here to audition. Yeah, totally. And this reminds me of you. And this is why I, I, I wanted to talk to you today about it, because you, you were uh, a female actress <laughs> who worked with David Hess. And when I think of David Hess, I just think of his graciousness, yep. especially with women working on films. So I said, let's, let's go make Sasha Gray. But I didn't want to just go over to Sasha Gray's house without letting her know I'm bringing <laughs> the, Afro, the craziest the giant man Afro. in Hollywood. <laughs> <laughs> so I called her, and I remember talking to her on the phone. There was a lion roaring in the background. A lion? Yeah. Huh. It was a lion. And she was like really panicking on the phone. I'm like, what? Uh, can I bring David Hess over? And she goes, I don't care. Just come over. Uh, I can't talk right now. The police are here. And a lion. So I tell this to David and David, and I can't wait to get there. <laughs> she was filming something. Her, her, uh, uh, she was just filming a video for herself using a sound effect, a lion in the background. Oh, OK. And I don't know if you can imagine this, but she had stalkers. And there was a guy in a truck parked outside her house, so she called the police. But that was David's first impression of <laughs> Sa Sasha Gray. So we go to it's her exciting. house. And it was so important for me that David and Sasha got along. Yeah. I wanted David, I wanted them to connect. Yeah. I wanted him, you know, you know they, they fight. There's scenes where they fight in the movie, and I, I, I didn't want David to be afraid to be his old self with her. Yeah. And I wanted Sasha to feel safe with David. Not that I was hesitant of any of this stuff, but. I didn't know them very well, and so we sat, I remember sitting on the, I sat in a chair, and, they, and David Hess and Sasha Gray sat opposite of me on the couch, mm -hmm. and Sasha Gray loves movies. Jean, Jean-Luc Godard, and Francois yeah, Cassavetes Truffaut, and, Cassavetes. Yeah. Cassavetes is the key. Mm -hmm. And she didn't know, and I was excited, to, oh, J Sasha, David grew up with John Cassavetes, and he, he started telling a story about how he lived in a part of New York City, across the street from, da from John Cassavetes, and David considered him like a father figure. Mm -hmm. And David only thought of acting because of John Cassavetes. John Cassavetes not only inspired him to be an actor, but showed him the ropes. And Sash Gray is sitting there with her mouth open because John Cassavetes is a hero to her. Yep. But David was telling his story. I mean, my eyes always go to Sasha Gray, but David was telling the story so sincerely, I couldn't look at her because mm -hmm. it, he, was, he was watering up, you know? He started hearing about John Cassavetes, remembering John Cassavetes, and saying that, you know, I can't do it, but he said, <laughs> I always wanted to, you know, John Cassavetes told me so much about the skill of acting. I always wanted to pass along to a young actress what I learned from John to someone young like yourself. Mm -hmm. And I looked, I panned over like a camera, I looked at Sasha Gray, and she was crying. Wow. And they were teared up together, just meeting each other for the first time. Aww. David has that effect on people. Yep. And I thought, oh, they're going to be so good together. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> just have so that moment good. of magic. Yeah. 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 Wow. Yeah. That's, so that's like my favorite Hollywood story, I think. Yeah. Um, that's beautiful. Thank you. You just kind of know that it's going to work. Yeah. I know. It, it, yeah. It's like movie magic. Yeah. Um, did you ever get physical with David? I mean, like, no, I guess you have the, uh, you do a nice lap dance for him. I did a very I think nice lap very dance for him. To. <laughs> <laughs> uh, and that was about it, I guess. Um, and then also when he's tearing my arm off and putting my body in the trunk. But mm. other than that, but yeah, he was great. He was, and he was like so good at telling me what he was going to do so I could anticipate. And again, it was my first film, so I didn't know how things happened and how you did things, but he was so good. And it wasn't just making a movie with him, it became very social. He was yep. out with us all the time. Yeah, every night we'd go out for beers and talk about yeah. stuff and decompress and, and yeah. it's, He was never a man of sh little words. No, it's very chatty. <laughs> <laughs> he yeah. always had a story for something. He's met pretty much anybody you could ever imagine. Yeah. yeah. Even Dario Argento. <laughs> <laughs> Especially Dario Argento. <laughs> I remember one time, it was a three week shoot and I did one day, one day during the afternoon, I didn't see David. I always was with him. Mm -hmm. Josh Grace wanted to take him to play tennis. 
Right. And so I, I, it's like, oh, I don't know if I can, do I, can I trust David be in the hands of other people, <laughs> other men? So I let David out of my sight mm -hmm. for a couple of hours. And of course, when I picked him up after playing tennis, he had hurt his knees. Oh, that's right. He sprained his knees. <laughs> yeah. For the rest of the movie, he's walking around like the, 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 the what is that? The, who's the guy who lives in the clock? Quasimodo. Quasimodo. <laughs> that was David for the rest of that shoot. Oh, that's right too. Yeah, and you didn't trust those guys because you thought. No, it's not that I didn't trust. Them. And I then did, they did break them. They em. did break them. That's why I didn't trust David breaking himself. <laughs> I remember one time it was like, I think it was right when we had finished shooting Smash Cutter near the end and we had all gone to Josh and Blake's house. It would be like three or four in the morning or something like that after yes, a bar. Yes, yes, yes. And there were like 20 other people in the house were all hanging out and it, everybody had kind of caught wind of who he was and what he did. Yeah. And then I think he'd had a couple of drinks. He was feeling really good. Maybe he had a puff of a green cigarette or something. <laughs> and he grabbed one of the guitars and he started playing All Shook Up. Wow. And I think that one of the guys got a film of it, but we were all sitting around and just wow. in awe watching this guy play one yeah, of the most famous rock and roll songs. His rendition of that is quite good. It, you know, the songs I listen to often, I always, ha always have his music on in the car and my kids love the songs. Summertime. Have you ever heard him sing Summertime? Mm -hmm. Like, I, have you ever tried to keep up with Summertime? It's impossible. Yeah. It's such a, his voice is so beautiful in that song. Yeah. Promised Land is one of my favorite songs ever, mm -hmm. which is on the Last House on the Left CD release. Yep. Uh, and Climbing Up, what's that? Climbing Up the Sunshine Mountain. Something like that. I always, <laughs> I'm bad with the names, but I love that album so yeah. much. I listen oh, to I it a lot. And, and then I watched Cabin Fever after because oh, they used right. Road to Nowhere on it. That's right. No, Road to Nowhere? Road Leads to Nowhere. There's, no, the Ice Cream song is also in that yep. movie. He's got two songs yep. from Last House and Left in that movie. Yep. I mean, as long as I know David, uh, he always, his, he had a dream. He, had, he, he really wanted Tarantino. He wanted to be not only in a Tarantino movie, but a bigger dream was having his music in a Quentin Tarantino movie. And he had met Quentin Tarantino, yep. just like Martin Cove. Martin Cove. Oh, this is giving me goosebumps. <laughs> I like this story. Martin Cove and David has had the same story about meeting Quentin Tarantino, that they both met him, and uh, they shared contact information. Quinton said to both of them, I want to work with you, I want you my movie, I love your movies, and they, they would, he would go on and on. But he, when he wrote down his phone number, they couldn't read his handwriting. Oh, David couldn't read the phone number he left for him. Martin yeah. couldn't read the Quentin Tarantino phone number, the number he left for him. Yeah. And so they never connected. But David would just go on, and I really want this to happen. Mm -hmm. and, I, you know, and it did. Mm -hmm. David has his song from Last House on the Left is on the an Oscar-winning soundtrack for The Hateful Eight. Yep. And God, did I ever love that part of that movie. I teared up watching that because oh, I didn't know the story and I watched it. Well, I knew the story of him loving Tarantino. Right. And then watching the film and then you see the music and you're like, oh my God, he finally got it. Ugh. Uh, it was a dream come true for him. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and I, I saw 70 millimeter print in Toronto. Yeah. And I couldn't believe how <laughs> See, I'm like tearing up. <laughs> yeah. Well, I, I, yeah, I, I always, you know, I, I get emotional too when I listen to his music. Mm -hmm. Well, uh, it was just cute. He, he didn't get to see it, but it was pretty cool. Yeah, that's, yeah, I, I think of that too. Mm -hmm. Well, maybe he did get to see it in some weird way. Yeah. It was I probably a pretty sweet cinema in hell. <laughs> <laughs> oh, I feel bad for hell now. <laughs> I remember seeing Indiana Jones and the Last Crusade. No, the Indiana Jones and Kingdom of the Skull with him in the theater. Oh, it was and so was, bad! I saw it with you guys. Yeah, we hated it. <laughs> we hated we were it. Going to set, and I couldn't uh, believe it. I was star. I was. I was. I was you're mm. livid. Yeah, and David, but David was excited to see that movie. Yeah. Uh, because he, I said to David, David, it starts with an Elvis Presley song, and oh, maybe it's one of mine. <laughs> and he was, he hated it as soon as it started. Because <laughs> it, it wasn't one of mine. It favorites. wasn't. I'm all shook up. <laughs> Uh, it wasn't oh, Speedy Gonzales either. Speedy Gonzales. Oh, yeah, I was about to say. Yeah. When my kids were in the car, I remember we went camping, and yeah. the, for one whole week, all we listened to was the Speedy Gonzales song, Aww. and they thought it was so crazy. And who's singing this? This is Uncle David. Uncle David singing so the song. That's so cute. And and I had to explain to them what cocaine was. <laughs> yeah. Also, the story of all shook up. Remember, he told us the story behind that is that he had an STD. <laughs> <laughs> He's like, everybody thinks it's feelings. Nope, it's an STD. <laughs> yeah, I think the, 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 the record company who paid him to write the song mm -hmm. sent, set up a, a blind date for David. <laughs> and he went out on a blind date and he came back with an STD. <laughs> and he yeah. walked in their room and said, you know, they had a meeting. He's like, I'm all pissed off here, you know? Yeah. Like, I can't stop scratching my crotch because you sent me out in the, with this woman. I didn't realize that she, you know, she would give me what I have between my legs right now. I'm like, oh, fuck you. I'm all pissed off. I'm all shook up. 
And they said, what did you say? I'm almost shook up here, look. And, and <laughs> they said, go write that song. And that's where that song, that's yep. what he always said. I remember being in his hotel room uh, at some festival, mm -hmm. opening up his guitar case and lifting his guitar. And underneath his guitar was the sheet music for I'm All, Sh I'm All Shook Up. Oh, wow. Yeah. And, he, and, I, and I said, can I have this? Yeah. <laughs> and he said, no, but you can go photocopy it. So yeah. I photocopied it. wonder if it was like an original from... I think he was 16 when he wrote that song. Something like that. Yeah, yeah. he was really young. He and had a turtleneck and a lot of hair in the photo. <laughs> Man, he, yeah, he looks good in a turtleneck. In tight <laughs> jeans. <laughs> uh, yeah, it's, I'm glad you brought up Speedy Gonzalez. That's a, that's a great one. Mm -hmm. um, and I do have a few tracks at home. He, would, he was working on a new album that he didn't get to finish but he would always send me music, yep. uh, like unfinished music. And it's nice to have that. I listen to it. It's on my iTunes iPod. Mm -hmm. What's in my pocket? An iPhone. Nobody knows. I, <laughs> <laughs> it, I have a lot of that music he never got to finish. And yep. it's nice to listen to. Mm -hmm. I, always, there's always David has some music on in my car. Mm -hmm. And I'm working on a film now. I'm hoping to use a, a track uh, That's for nice. something. Yeah. I'm, I'm editing a movie for a friend. I'm going to use a David Hess song. Mm -hmm. uh, what's the song called? Hi. Nice. You know that one from, yeah. from his last album? Mm -hmm. You know, we always we were going to work on another film together. Mm -hmm. David wanted to make another film right away, and I, you know, it was fun not only ma making the movie with David and getting to know him before we even started shooting and shooting the smash cut, feeling like I've known him forever. But when the movie was done, we went to, we toured the world, uh, we did festival after festival. Mm -hmm. Smash Cut was the first film in Canada shot on the red camera. Yep. We dropped it in the toilet at one part during the movie, and David called it the brown. <laughs> <laughs> uh, so apt. <laughs> but we, we would often see each other, or he'd always want to Skype me. Mm -hmm. uh, and we, um, we, we did discuss two other projects. One of it was a Django movie, mm -hmm. because he kept, he, he, he kept close with Franco Nero, who I idolize. Mm -hmm. And I'm like, wow, I would love to convince uh, Franco to do a Django film. Mm -hmm. And David asked, and, and Franco said, oh, cool. yeah, he'd be interested. After all these years, he would be. I think he's about to do one now, or trying to yeah. do one. But back then, in 2010, uh, Ian wrote a script. He wrote Smash Gun. He was, he was writing a script about a Django film. Mm -hmm. And I remember pitching at the Rob Menzies. It, it, it was set in Canada at the border. And, for, and, and David Hess was going to be in it with Franco Nero. And uh, it would be, the story was that, you know, for the original Django opens with him dragging a coffin. And the coffins are full of guns. Mm -hmm. In this film, he'd be dragging three coffins. It opens up with him dragging three coffins, but they're full of slaves. And he's uh, bringing slaves into Canada and freeing them in Canada, which happened. Mm -hmm. uh, and, they, and, and a lot of producers told me, you can't make that movie. No one... The only westerns only sell in the United States and will never sell overseas, so forget about it, Lee. No one's making westerns. And then a year later, yeah, <laughs> Django and Chain came out about a Django movie about slavery with ah, Franco Nero, no less. Franco Nero. <laughs> and then the other movie that uh, David and I wanted to I, I, I pitched David on the idea of remaking Hitchhike, yep. And, and, but we would do a role reversal. Well, David Hess would play Franco Nero's character, so he would be on his honeymoon, and Franco Nero would be the hitchhiker playing David Hess's character, who would get in the car and terrorize the both of them. That's pretty fun. Yeah. 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 He like he talked he liked talking about working with is it Connie Cleary from yeah. the Hitchhike? Yeah. And working yeah, with he liked her, her. And, and doing that scene with her. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Th th that interview I was talking about on on the, the DVD. He said things on the last house House of the Edge of the Park DVD. Yeah. In that 40-minute interview, he talks about things I've never heard an actor talk about. You know, his relationship with women and, you know, the things that went on between him and the, the Hollywood's best-kept secrets. And he just, he seemed so brave yeah. and, 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 and fearless. Mm -hmm. And that's why I wanted to work with him. Uh, Sasha Gray had the same thing about her. She seemed like a fearless performer. When was the very last time you saw David? That's a good question. I remember talking to him to him the night before he passed. When Mark Scheffler called me to tell me the bad, the sad news. Mm -hmm. Mark was very broken up at the phone. I then called Martin Cove mm -hmm. and let Martin know. I talked to him the night before mm -hmm. uh, on Skype. And I remember talking to him on Skype and behind him on his wall, there was a, a prop from Smash Cut that he took home with him. One of the, the paintings? Yeah. 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 Um, and uh, yeah, that's, that's what I remember the last time seeing him was the night yeah. before. Uh, yourself? Uh, I saw, the last time I saw him, we were in Montreal or New York. It might have been New York when we were all flying by, or flying back, and we 
all split ways in the Toronto airport. But the very last time I saw him, we were all going secure, through security and he had to go through a different thing and I thought we'd end up in the same spot. So I'm like, all right, see you later. And I didn't actually get to give him a proper goodbye. But Right. Yeah. But there were so many lovely hellos. Lots of lovely hellos. There was a, yeah. Enough emotions <laughs> to go around. Yeah. 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 Well, here we are without David Hess in our lives. Mm -hmm. It's so weird. But in a way, though, Jenny Lee, I don't... I know, I know it's easy. I, yeah, of course I miss him. I call, yeah. He'd call me all the time. He'd call me at the cinema. The employee's here. It's like, David's on the phone again, Lee. <laughs> of course I miss all that stuff. But I yeah. think about him so much. And I listen to his music so much. And I love going back to Smash Cut and watching it. I feel like he's still on my life. Like, yeah. I have messages from him still on my phone. So do I. <laughs> and emails and stuff. Yeah. yeah. I still feel like it feels like Smash Cut was yesterday, even though... It's almost 10 years. Almost 10 years. Yeah. Since we first met David Hess. Wow. <laughs> we were just virgins. <laughs> <laughs> um, yeah, I, I, you know, I know Mark, when you talk to Mark, he, he just, he thinks about him every day and he seems really, really broken up about it. Yeah. Uh, Mark's a great guy. Mark would tell me some great stories when, when Last House on the Left got released. I was in a restaurant in Little Italy in New York City with, I don't know, were you there? Yep. It was Mark, me, you, yep. and David. Really and good pasta. It was so yes. Good. <laughs> David got up to go and take a shit. <laughs> As usual, he was regular. <laughs> I like saying that because that's a line from the Smash Cut. <laughs> hey, Smitty, watch the bar. I gotta take a shit. Which was a line from the Hershey Gordon Lewis movie. Yeah. And Mark told us, it's like, Lee, it, you know, I've been to this restaurant before with David, but back in 1972, when Last House on the Left came out. And when that movie was out, it played for like a year in the theater, everywhere. And everywhere we went, people would want to pick a fight with David Hess because he was so menacing in Last House on the Left. Yep. He was, everyone hated him and they wanted to fight him because they thought he was really that guy. And it was back in the day too, David was younger and he probably had a few beers in him. So he, he if someone picked a fight with David, he wouldn't shy away yeah. and fist, fist of cuffs would happen. <laughs> and I just love how Mark told those stories and yeah. it seemed so exciting and that, that one film could have such a large impact. Absolutely. You know, imagine seeing a villain from a movie in a bar, I would never think to myself, there's the guy, let's get him. <laughs> but it, you know, Dave is so fucking good in Last House of Oh, Love. he's it so believable, like, he's yeah. terrifying. Yeah. yeah, yeah. It's hard to imagine there was a nice guy under that. I think when you watch Sma uh, Swamp Thing, yeah. Swamp Thing, I see a little bit of the, the, the fun David Hess that I know. Yeah. He, he's got his damp afro now. <laughs> <laughs> That makes me think of the guy I knew a little bit, even though he's the villain, yep. but he's having fun with the role. Yeah. Smash Cut, by the way, so there's so many, you know, the script is different from the movie because David had so many great ideas. Mm -hmm. I remember when he came to Ottawa, he's like, you know, you know that opening scene where in the movie theater and everyone's watching my movie and hating it? I think everyone should be dressed up like clowns. This movie sucks! It's like a midnight movie and everyone's excited in the movie and they dress up like clowns and I should be dressed up like a clown and we could be play Pe Peacci. Is mm -hmm. that how you say that? Uh, uh, Pegliacci. Pe Pegliacci. Uh, uh, David, like <laughs> David knew more about opera than you or I. <laughs> and so that was all him. And there's so much in the movie. There's just so every outfit he tried on, you know, when he did the, the you know, he dressed up like Clint Eastwood in one murder. He wanted every murder sequence he'd be a different character from a movie or a play. Uh, so he does Clint Eastwood from Good, the Bad, and the Ugly. Mm -hmm. He does the Phantom of the Opera. He comes out of the, the door back here, break, breaks the projection. He breaks the door, door <laughs> almost tumbles down the stairs. <laughs> and it was so fun working with him. He, he changed things up. He added a yoga scene. There's a yoga scene in Smash Cut that wasn't supposed to be there. Yep. He said, Lee, we should, I should do yoga. Yep. My character should do yoga. In the movie. <laughs> and when I watched the movie with Ian, I watched it recently with Ian, we were, because it's part, they show Smash Cut at Carleton University here in Ottawa. That's right. And Ottawa University. Part of their you, curriculum. Thank you for saying that because I can't say the word curriculum. <laughs> <laughs> so David Hess is now in, in a part of people's studies here in Ottawa. <laughs> and um, when I watched it the last time with Ian in a movie theater, mm -hmm. Ian sat beside me and then the yoga scene came out. He just like closed his eyes. But everybody laughs. That's one of the biggest laughs I know. in the film. I, I think yeah. so too. It's hilarious. He doesn't like it because it's not in the script. <laughs> but I, that's what I kept saying to, to everyone I work with. It's like, you're working with David Hess. He's got a lot to teach us. Yep. And please listen. Absolutely. And if it's nutty as he seems, as crazy as I ideas is, I think there's, there's worth in it. And we should all just sit back and watch the, 
him be good and yeah. be a professional. Well, he's a true artist. He sees stuff from all those realms that he's so familiar with, music and film and everything mm -hmm. else. So, mm -hmm. yeah. Mm -hmm. I think, you know, that's what it was like working with Martin Cove. You know, it was nice becoming close to Martin Cove before and getting to know David. Mm -hmm. And uh, Martin uh, is the reason why David has his in last house on the left. Really? At the time he was dating David has his sister. Interesting. And uh, the, he tried out for the lead role in, in, in uh, Last House and Left. Yeah. But he didn't like it. He thought it was too violent. He's like, he didn't think it was for him. Mm -hmm. um, I think a lot of actors were afraid to play that role. Yeah, that could be a real career sinker in, uh, in some cases. But he said to the producer, I, I got the guy for you. Don't, don't go anywhere. And he went over and got David. And, and David, you know, isn't the bulkiest guy, but he put on all these sweaters. He's like, here, put on this right. sweater. And he kept dressing him up. So when David showed up to uh, the, the audition, he was hot. They were in a cab. He, he was sweating and all pissed off. And again, it was like, you know, writing, I'm all shook up here, <laughs> just like that, in the yeah. audition. And the, the producers laughed and came back in and said, you got the role, man. Wow. <laughs> wow. he's impressive. He impresses. Yeah. yeah. Uh, when you first meet him. So many people I know who only met him for a short time gush about David Hess. Yeah. What, a, what an impact. Yeah. What a, what, a, what a wise man, generous man, and uh, what a nice time. It was nice to be able to talk about him like this. And thank you Absolutely. for joining me here at the Old Mayfair Theatre. Thanks for I having can, me at the Old Mayfair Theatre. I can almost smell his hair. You know, when oh, you I hug can him, totally smell his hair. You hug him, hair. you can smell his hair. Yeah. 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 Kind of squeezed out. <laughs> and that's where we cut. That's called a smash cut. <laughs> And cut! That's a print.